Hi, I'm Ross Bentley. Hi, I'm Jeff Brown. And this is is, is no, no dumb, dumb questions. questions. <laughs> okay, know. so I that is going to be the dumbest uh, intro ever. Intro ever, right? But, no dumb questions, but dumb intro. But maybe, maybe we got it a little bit better coordinated or matching up. Who knows? <laughs> but, <laughs> We'll but if see. somebody doesn't laugh we'll at see. that, then uh, there's something wrong. <clears throat> right, right. Yeah. Okay, I, we got. I'm going to delve right in here because I I can't wait to hear the answer to this. Um, David sent a question in, and he said it's a dumb question, but yeah, no, there are no dumb questions here by definition. So he said, "Is there ever a time when you would use understeer to your advantage?" Hmm. And he said specifically using it to slow the car down as opposed to lifting and braking. And I'm going hmm, even more now. At a recent SCCA time trial event, one of my friends mentioned that sl they slow the car down slightly into turn one or turn four at Thunder Hill West by using the front wheels to scrub speed. I've done this before on a cart, but in a car, it seems like a risky tactic. Instinctively, this sounds like a bad habit, but I'm dumb. Maybe you guys can explain a little more. Yeah, I don't think he's dumb. Well, yeah, what do, I'm what do you think? dumb, but uh... right. I, I, I'm like, huh. Maybe this is one of those you should have just thrown out because we're not sure. Yeah, but it brings a lot of my gears start turning. But you're you're the driver. Have you ever done that before? Like use the steering wheel to slow down. Uh, yes. The question should the follow-up question should be on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> on purpose, you're a good one. Because absolutely for sure, have I have I induced understeer to slow the car down? I'm going to say the the one place where I've done that more than others is actually in the rain. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's something that it's it's a technique that I think a lot of good rain drivers use is coming to the corner you know, that much. And I'm kind of do, holding up the little tiny gap between the, my fingers here, you know, one mile an hour, two miles an hour, three miles an hour, too fast for the entry in the rain. And you come in and you kind of, you know, you turn in enough that you induce some understeer. And it may even be that, you know, you kind of release the brakes a little bit sooner than usual. So you're kind of unloading the front, inducing some understeer. and you know, by doing that, you're entering the corner and you're going, I know what I've got. You know, I'm going to, I'm, I've got understeer. I'm coming to the corner. Uh, you know, the big fear that a lot of people have with the rain is when's the car going to become uncontrollable? It's going to start to slide. It's going to do something. It's going to oversteer or understeer, right? There, there, there's some fear around that or self preservation around that. And so, if you come into a corner and you deliberately make the car understeer, then you know what you've got. And, you know, in the process of inducing some understeer, you are scrubbing off a little bit of speed. And, you know, the, the, the challenge there is not to induce too much understeer because if you crank the wheel and just get a big massive amount of understeer, it's going to scrub off that, off that speed and those front tires are eventually going to hook up and they're going to go boom over that direction over there. And the rear is going to snap around on you and you get that, you know, Jeff, I'm, I know for sure you've had a gazillion drivers that you've worked with who said, yeah, the car understeers a little bit, but then it goes to snap oversteer. Well, sometimes it's caused by this kind of thing, I think. Um, All right. So, uh, you know, so I'm going to say for sure in the rain, it's something I've used. Um, I'm trying to think where else I may have used it. Uh, how about, how about like on ovals when you were doing driving at Indy? Was that, uh, maybe not on purpose, but uh, I bet yeah. for sure you would, you know, I've, I've, I guess I never worked with you on an oval, but I'm yeah. sure you've had an engineer that has said, because you and I've talked about it, even on long corners in, in road courses, right? Yeah turn in, 
it takes the kind of set because it's a long corner because yep. so there's time for it to kind of set and then add a little wheel and if it understeers you know you're not about ready to spin out if you add a little wheel and it oversteers it is it's kind of like your rain thing you're kind of feeling out your balance there in the middle of a corner i know a lot of drivers at india are doing that same thing and if you've carried a little bit too much speed maybe and you know you have an understeering car would you ever just add a little bit more just to get us a mile an hour off rather than lifting and changing the balance of the car and stuff i'll bet you guys like rick mears or uh you know elio or somebody like that who are really really good on a, on a place like the speedway they may be yep. doing that i never ever got to that point M my mindset on ovals has always been i don't want to scrub off any speed because right momentum is more your friend there than on any ever road course right so I, yep. I would be afraid to scrub off speed with the steering wheel but i also know that it works because you know i remember the very first time i ever went around the speedway with my foot nailed to the floor and i turned it into the corner and you know you'd have the digital readout in the dash of the miles per hour and you're like i turn the steering wheel my foot is flat to the floor i've got I think the best IndyCar ever drove had, you know, 800 horsepower or something like that. Uh, but my foot's flat to the floor. I turn the steering wheel and I'm seeing the speed going from whatever, you know, 330, 329, 328, 327, 325. Like it is taking speed off. Uh, so you kind of know it's doing that. So then you're like, I want to turn the wheel as little as possible and avoid scrubbing off that speed. So yeah, that makes that's sense. An opposite yeah. kind of a thing here. So um, I'm not sure yeah. I'm. I've, that's like, yeah, I don't think <clears> I've answered David's like question. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's, I, I get, I, I'm thinking back to the NASCAR stuff and, you know, like qualifying at Daytona or Talladega. It's, uh, I, I remember, uh, I think, yeah, Colin jumping in the thing one, one time to go qualify and his crew chief, Mike Beam, leaned in and he goes, now, Colin. I don't want you using the brake. And remember, the biggest brake you got that's is that thing in your hands. <laughs> yeah. The steering wheel. Yeah. You know, don't turn the steering wheel because it's a brake. Yeah. And so kind of like your your thing at, at Indy. But he, you know, David yeah. asks, would you use it to your advantage? I mean, could you? I don't know. I've never known that where you just go in there and just okay I, i'd rather do that than put on the brake to slow down maybe my new changes I don't know. yeah yeah so david i would say you know have that in your toolbox you know it's 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 something yeah. it's something that you can use uh you know to your point it's i'm gonna say it's it's maybe harder to be super accurate to reproduce lap after lap after lap uh, than managing your speed with the pedals. And, you know, I'm a great believer in, you know, we really drive the car more with our feet than we do with our hands. I'm not saying that turning the steering wheel is important, but, you know, I, I think I've, I can't remember if I've ever shared this here, but, uh, you know, like I have this fantasy, my goal in life is to turn a lap of a road course, never turning the steering wheel but only ever changing the direction of the car with my feet by how I release the brakes and get the car to rotate and, you know, get back to power and all that kind of stuff and managing the rotation and the yaw in the car and everything just with my feet. So that's like my ultimate because mm -hmm. turning the steering wheel slows you down. And, you know, so could it be used deliberately? Yes. Have I used it deliberately in the rain? Yes. Have I used it deliberately in the dry? I'm trying to think of if I have, um, Again, I'm sure I've done it. I just not sure I've kind of thought, oh, I'm just going to turn the wheel here and scrub off a little speed because I think I might have tried a right. different approach. Yeah. You talk, you often talk about the opposite of that is getting drivers to open their hands on the exit. Yeah. To not keep the, the understeer in it because you need to free the thing up to open your hands on the exit. So, but on the entry, yeah, I, I I know 
when you have a big understeering car, a lot of drivers will say, these tires, for instance, I remember the old Continental IMSA tire. <clears throat> You'd get an understeer and it would start to, quote, take off. You know, the front would start to slide. And all the drivers would say it never recovered. Like you, you take steering out and the tire would never get gain back grip again. And you would have to slow way down to get some of that grip back. Where like the current Michelin, I don't know about the GTP tire, but the current Michelin is better than that. You get a little understeer, starts to understeer, slowing the car down again. You could open your hands a few degrees and the grip would come back. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it depends on the tire too, if, if you can manage it a little bit. That'd be, that's another interesting thing to see. I have to look at that to see if drivers, it might be a subconscious thing where it's, you that's know, what I'm thinking. hey, I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little too quick here. I'll just hold this extra steering that I don't really need for a split second and then away you go. Yeah. Because, hmm. I, because I think he if says, you, he sees guys, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think if you, if you deliberately did it too much, I think you're going to scrub off too much speed. And I think there's a, you know, again, I think if you did it with your feet, you could be a little finer in the adjustment than you can with the steering wheel, because it's kind of like yeah. you get that understeer and you kind of try to scrub some speed and, uh, you know, you just keep scrubbing and scrubbing. And then you're like, oh, now, I, you know, like I didn't get the wheel out of it. It's almost like uh, I'm going to say to me, that feels a little bit like a band aid. You know, it's yeah. it's like. I yep. can't get the car to turn. Well, I'm going to just stand on the throttle and cause some power oversteer and hang the tail out. You can do that for a little while, but eventually you're either going to destroy the rear tires or you're going to spin the car. And in the case of this, where if you did it for too much and, you know, I, the interesting, you know, he's talking about time trials. Well, Hey, you're not doing multiple laps. So tires aren't going to massively go off. So maybe more, more likely there. Um, yep. but in a longer run, you might just, you know, overheat those tires, beat up the front tires. And, you know, eventually you brought the whole performance down because of that. So, um, maybe yeah. different in a time trial situation with, you know, a couple laps kind of thing, as opposed to a 30 minute race or a 24 hour race. Yep. Yep. I mean, understeer, you know, would you use understeer to your advantage? is actually his first question so, i yes. would use it on an oval yes i would yeah. use it on an oval so that it, it gives the driver confidence yes if he knows he has understeer then it's an advantage because he has confidence if he's not sure you'll be slower because he's like Ooh, I, I don't know i might be too loose and he's going to take some speed off with the brake but if he knows he has understeer he can just drive into it and get a little a little understeer yep I think that gives him some confidence. So yes. that first sentence, is there ever a time when you would use understeer to your advantage? That's when I would use it. Yes. Uh, the second one, specifically using it to slow the car down as opposed to lifting and braking, that's kind of a little bit of our debate. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say that one's more iffy and maybe the answer is it depends. But but in right, terms of the, the first question of can you use it to your advantage? Absolutely, yes, like you said. Uh, but even... It's interesting how many drivers that I've coached through the years who say, I hate understeer. Give me an oversteering car. And, you know, you've got a car that's really, you know, it's quite nicely balanced. And then you make the car oversteer a little bit, you know, like on a scale of on a scale of one to five, it's a one or a two oversteer. So just right. a little bit of oversteer. Just yeah, and their lap time drops off by a second, and then yeah. you go the other direction, and it's like a one or a two of oversteer or understeer. I mean, well, one or two on understeer, and they lose a tenth or two. So, right. you know, yeah, while they may not enjoy it as much, often understeer is a little quicker, right? Right, right, and especially on the entry, I think if you have yeah. that little bit of understeer on the entry gives them confidence because they don't want to spin out from from 160 mile an hour corner to a 60 mile an hour corner and a little oversteer from the center of the corner out is kind of manageable so a nice understeer in little oversteer out 
gives them confidence. And, you know, if every corner on the track was a tight hairpin, yeah, you'd probably want the car to oversteer more. Uh, right. Generally, there's a mix of, of corners. And, and when you were talking about that, it reminded me of that quote uh, from Mark Donahue and where he said, uh, exiting, an, exiting a corner with the tires at their limit is like tightrope walking. But entering a corner with and with putting the car on the limit on the entry of the corner is like jumping onto a tightrope blindfolded. <laughs> that's because like, yeah. once you're in the corner, you know what you've got and you right. can work with it. Right. Whereas when you come into the corner, you're like, what have I got? And it's not until you get into the corner, you go, okay, now I know what I've got. And right. if what you've got on the entry is a little tiny bit of understeer, again, not to the point where it's hurting you, uh, but that little bit of understeer on the entry just helps you. Uh, yeah, it's, then you then you know what you've got know what you've got and again that kind of goes back to what I was saying about driving in the rain. Uh, my goal always is to induce a little bit of understeer on the entry of the corner, so then I can work with it with the car the rest of the way through it. I'm not waiting going it's, through the corner, going when's it going to snap? When's it going to snap? When's it going to push? When's it going to do something? Uh, I already know what it's going to do. Yep, yeah, that it, it makes sense. It's but it does go back to the uh, what was that? days of thunder maybe or something loose is fast yeah. and 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 it is at, at indy is a great example i mean that little bit of understeer that gives you confidence gives you confidence that driver will go better but if you have a driver that doesn't need that confidence or can drive it with a little bit less understeer he'll be faster yeah you know than the other guy i mean i experienced that uh, when I was doing Indy cars, then Montoya came to the speedway for the first time. I mean, it was just holy moly. There was just nobody that could drive the car as loose as we called it free. Yeah. Loose was, you visited that guy in the hospital. He said, yeah, it was really loose. The guy who was free was fast. Montoya could drive a car freer than anybody in that era when he showed up. She could just drive a freer car less understeer it was just plain faster and the other guys you would you know you could set the car up the same kind of way as montoya liked it for the other guys and they're like yeah no man i'm not doing that i need yeah. that little bit of understeer to have that confidence so yeah. you're always i think you're always going to be faster if you don't have that little bit of no if you don't need that little bit of understeer uh yeah yeah and, and but if you need it you gotta have it you reminded me of the, also the, you know, loose, free. The other one is the car is too neutral. That's a good one, I think, is, you know, neutral. the car is just yep. too neutral. What do you mean? How can it be too neutral? Well, if right. it's going to do something, it's going to get loose. Exactly. It's neutral, exactly. but if it's going to do exactly. something, that's it. Yeah. Yep. And, and you know, ovals are so good for getting that fine, minute yeah. detail. There's not understeer and oversteer on an oval. It's yeah too free, too neutral, not neutral enough, not free enough. It's yeah. those kind of, a th that, that kind of a thing. And, and it's, I mean, there's world racing corners that are like that too. Yeah. That you get a chance to feel that out on. So yeah, yeah, that was, that's good. Well, I don't think we answered it, but we certainly, uh, we beat it up. I don't think we, yeah, that was, that was a good one. I, no, I was yeah. enjoyable. Yeah. Thanks David. Uh, so I got one for you. Um, this comes from Kyle. And uh, I guess in a way, it's a, kind of tied into some of the stuff we were talking about. Is after li listening to countless episodes, well, first of all, Kyle, you, you need to go and find something better to do than listen to countless episodes of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. But Poor after guy. listening to countless episodes of your podcast dating quite a ways back, there's a common theme of a yes and no kind of case-by-case -case basis being the answer because every driving scenario was different. Cars, corners, speeds, grip levels, track configurations, risk level, et cetera, et cetera. My question is, can you think of anything in racing slash car setup that is definitive and absolute, or does the entire motorsport world really always come down to doing what works best for an individual scenario? So there you go, Jeff. Answer it. And, and it, your question. answer should be yes or no. <laughs> yes or no. Uh, what was the fact? Is there anything you can think of definitively absolute? Uh, okay. Yes. 
there is some things good. I can think of. Okay, there we are. There we're done. Then. Yeah. Done. All right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Kyle. Good question. <laughs> yeah. So, um, it, so what is it then, Jeff? What What are some absolutes in your case? In your... Um, uh, let me. When When Kyle wrote us that question, I quickly just jotted down some bullet points, and I think maybe just as a fun thing, I'll just I'll just list them off real quick, and then we can whatever ones peak your and my interest, we can we can talk about. I so, said, just so you know, I I created a list as well. Yeah, I see yours is even longer than mine. <laughs> oh, it's it's funny too. They don't match that close either. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, okay, this is going to be good. Okay, so I said yes, absolute definitive. I said a fast driver. There's no substitute for a fast driver. Pay him whatever it takes. That was that was one definitive. Yep. I said lots of money. It's best if you have more to spend than anyone that you're racing against. That's an absolute. I will always make you better. So going back to the first one, can I be your yep. fast driver? Well, no, I guess I'm I'm not perfect. Anymore, so yeah. Perfect. Right. Yeah. We'll pay you whatever whatever it takes. Yeah. That's the part um, that that appealed to me there. So <laughs> the, the the okay, I got yeah, it. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, lots of money. That's an absolute. New tires. Absolute. Everybody wants new tires. Those are always make you faster. More power. It's always a good thing. And see, I'm using words like always, not 51%, not most yep, of the yep. time. More power, always. Better fuel mileage, and preferably with more power. Better fuel mileage and more power. That's an absolute. That's always better. More downforce. It's always better. Or less drag with more downforce. That's even even better. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's kind of joking. But those are those are absolutes that... It, it, I guess that's kind of a way of saying, uh, there's not many, but those are kind of like, yeah, I'll take those. But okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna poke at a couple of them. Okay. Um, the first one is new tires. So yep. I, I recall fifteen more than fifteen years ago, uh, taking a young driver to a track. In a Formula Renault car, <laughs> you and I, uh, and yep. and us saying you don't get new tires, you gotta you gotta drive around and learn to drive on these tires that have pieces of fabric flaying out of them. And <laughs> that same young driver had done the same kind of thing in a go kart, and it had helped him become a better driver in his pro career, being Colin, yep. your son. So yep. there's a I could make the argument that new tires not always is the right thing to do from a driver development perspective. There is a time and a place to not put new tires on, but run on old tires, learn how to get the most out of old tires. Yep. No, I, I agree completely. I will say that I was going for the new tires. These are the things that I would always take. If somebody said, you can have used tires, you know, and I'm just trying yeah. to win a race or qualify on pole. Yeah. Give me new tires. I had a driver back in when I was running the Camel Light cars for Team Scandia, and he was paying for the second seat <clears throat> in the car. So it was fine. And he would go out and do four or five laps, come in and say, give me more downforce and new tires. Yeah. And I'd be like, all right. So he put more wing in it, put new tires, and he went faster. He'd do five or six laps, come back in. I want new tires and even more downforce. And that was his thing. It was four or five times a weekend, that's what he wanted. We'd get in the race, and he couldn't get new tires in every five laps, and he suffered. But, boy, we always went faster when we put new tires on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, I don't know. Okay, poke another one. Okay, the other one was is downforce because well, I mean I'm I'm getting really picky here because you said more downforce was always better, essentially, but then you clarified yep. it with less drag with more downforce because just it's more downforce. Drag. I can put more downforce on a car, right? But I might slow it down right. because I cause so much drag. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, like Daytona in an IMSA car, more downforce is not better. Le Mans. With a LMP2 car, more downforce is not better. More efficiency. Give me a more efficient car that has a better L over D lift to drag ratio. I'll take that. Um, 
most, this is kind of a little bit off topic, but I, what I find is interesting in North America, pretty sure I can say this. Here's almost, here's, no, he wants absolutes. Yeah. And I'm hemming and hawing already. Yeah, yeah. Most tracks in North America with an IMSA car, with a prototype, you are, we're running the most balanceable downforce we can, except Daytona. Yeah. So even Road America, where you think, ooh, really fast, we're still running the most downforce that we can balance front to rear. We're still running maximum downforce. And I don't know if that applies to Indy cars. I haven't talked to my friends that much about that on road courses, but I'm pretty sure they're doing the same thing. But that's yeah. still, ah, that's not an absolute. He wants absolutes. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Do you have any? Okay, let's look at your list. Okay, so I'll just run through mine, and then you can decide which ones you want to poke at. Okay. Okay. Uh, how you release the brake, the brakes always matters. I'm not saying <laughs> what you're doing, but how you do it, it matters. Okay. Yeah. You can never be reminded to look far enough ahead enough. I don't care who you are, being reminded, look farther ahead. Good thing. Yep. Ma managing your car's load transfer will always make a difference. Every yep. corner is different, so you need to adapt to it. Uh, I know that's kind know. of a cheating one in a way because I'm kind of, I'm playing the, uh, it's different, so you got to adapt. So that's, yeah, okay. But anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, beginning to accelerate out of a corner from a higher speed will always result in a better lap time unless it delays how early you can first apply the throttle. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, the less load transfer you cause, the more grip you'll have from the tires. You might want to poke at that just a little bit. I don't know whether... Yeah, I, I, I got... Okay, okay, that's a pokeable one. Okay. <clears throat> In an aero car, the faster you go, the more grip you'll have until you run out of grip. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is bad. Two hands on the steering wheel will always give you more feedback than if you're driving with one hand on the wheel. Mm -hmm. okay. Driving a larger radius through a corner will always result in being able to go faster on that path. And then I put sort of in brackets, uh, not necessarily the fastest way to go around the track, though. So I don't know if it works here. Uh, uh, you're hedging on that one. <laughs> well, like if you want to go from the corner entry to the corner exit, the larger the radius will allow you to go faster. Now, I'm not saying it's yep. less time, but it will allow you to go faster. Okay. Go faster. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. And then the flip side of that is driving a shorter distance will always be the fastest way to get from A to B uh, related, but sometimes the opposite to the above. Um, yeah. And the last one was your self-belief will always impact your driving performance. So meaning Ooh. that's something that you kind of touched on is confidence. Confidence. You're like, yeah. I yeah. don't feel confident. Guess what? You're not going to perform it as well as you would as if you were feeling confident. If you're deep down yep. inside going, I I'm I know I can do this, that's going to make yeah. In fact, I'm going to say it's make going to make the biggest difference. And that's an absolute. So so poke away. That one might yeah, no, that last one I think might be your self-leaf always impact your driving performance. Yeah. Yeah. I that I see that all the time. I've got to work with a lot of drivers and it's amazing how you, how a driver's ability, skill level changes with that, that self-belief and that confidence. And a lot of my job as an engineer is to give him confidence. Yeah. And sometimes, it, and that doesn't mean necessarily a pep talk. You can do it, buddy. I know you can <laughs> go into that corner faster. Yeah. You know, it's not that. It's giving him a car that instills confidence with his hands and his feet and his eyes and his how it feels and all that kind of stuff and that's yeah there there may be absolute there may be the biggest one for kyle's thing is from a setup and a driver standpoint that is an absolute confidence it's going to be faster i've I'm never seen a driver is always going to be fast, faster yeah right right and that's 
you know, it really distills a lot of the things that you talk about and you wrote about at length in your books and you coach about is, is getting that confidence, you know, Hey, you can do this corner this way. And if you do it, you'll have more confidence and it'll, you know, you're trying to give them confidence. I'm trying to give them confidence from a setup. So, yeah. So I, I like that one. I'm I'm not poking at that one. I think we've kind of, we've hit one for Kyle confidence, (laughs) self belief. There you go. We got yeah. one. So um, the load transfer, load yeah. transfer, you cause more grip. You'll have from the tire, the less load transfer you cause. Yeah, I think that's probably true. I would say more grip, but you have to have a, enough load transfer because you got to get it you got to get enough load transfer to get that tire up on the peak of its curve curve maybe the one would be too much load transfer will cause you to lose grip there you go that's probably a better way of putting yeah yeah it, right it, because you've gone over the peak of the curve yeah and i guess <laughs> you know probably what i also i mean if i kept with the less load transfer you cause probably should have said the more overall grip your car will have too, right? Because, right. I mean, if I cause load transfer onto one tire, yeah, that one tire is going to gain grip. But I might lose yep. more from the other tires that kind of cancels it out, right? That's kind of right. I guess, where I was, I guess what I was aiming for. So need to work on the word yep. on that one. So, yeah. No, I mean, you know, in, in general, his question, I could see, yeah, I yeah, I know you do too. We get I always get questions like that. And it's really frustrating not to be able to give somebody who's yeah new and struggling and trying to figure out this and really interested in it. You know, people come up to me and say, I got da 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 da. da. And it, it always understeers, should I put stiffer springs in the front or softer springs in the front? <laughs> and that seems pretty simple, right? I mean, yeah. you just want to answer, you know, it can't it should be one or the other. And how hard can that be? And I'm always like, Oh man, I wish I could just say softer or stiffer. Yeah. But I always start out with things like, well, how much grip do you have? What kind of tire do you have? Does the track have a lot of grip? Does it have a little bit of grip? Is it a fast corner? Is it a slow corner? Do you transfer a lot of weight to the front on the brakes? Do you, and and there's like eight things they have to answer. And then I still say, well, okay, thanks for all of that. Well, I don't know. I would try stiffer, but it might not work. So if that doesn't try softer and I feel terrible because I can't give the guy a real answer. And that's probably what makes both of our jobs really fun. Right. Oh yeah. Because if, if you could just look at it on a spreadsheet and go softer, stiffer. Oh, Jeff said, always go stiffer springs. If it understeers on the front and that always worked pretty in after one podcast, everybody would know that, and that would be no fun anymore. They're trying right. to figure that out. Right. It's it's it, it. This is that is definitely what makes this sport so much fun. Is there is no one answer to right answer to everything, uh, except right. except what tire pressure should I be running in my car? I think it's thirty one point six psi, isn't it? Right. Yes, thirty one point six hot, or do you do that cold? Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. Always. Always. Yeah, yeah. Every time. 31.6. Which which actually uh, reminds me of remember the time that we were working with a driver in a Ferrari challenge car on a test day at Laguna? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, you had been working on tire pressures and tuning the car, and you know, you knew what the tire pressure should be. But every now and then you would, I think, reduce the pressure like one PSI or something like that. And then as part of the driver development stuff, we went way up in the pressures. Like I think we went six PSI higher and this driver went faster. <clears throat> and I think yep. what it was, was the car actually probably lost a little bit of grip, but the car was so responsive, the driver felt more confident and they drove faster. So exactly. it kind of comes back to the confidence and self-belief thing, right? <clears throat> yep, I think that's, that's the one. 
it was weird because when we started with this question from Kyle, I was like, I don't know, there isn't one. But I think we actually nailed one. I think there there might actually be one. And it's 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 what makes some of that fun. Like that thing we did with that tire pressure thing at Laguna, I would have never believed that would be faster. I mean, I said, Ross, I just put like six extra pounds in here. This thing's going to slide all over the place. Laguna's got no grip to begin with. I hope they don't spin out and back it in and crash the thing. And suddenly the lap times were better. I'm like, yep, proves I know nothing because <laughs> it's, 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 and it's fun to learn those things because you, because there are no absolutes. And so, uh, it, mm. and it, it reminds me to not get locked into certain beliefs. Oh, this is the way it always works. Um, you know, it doesn't, I, I love it when I do a change to a car that I know, know is going to do something and it does the opposite or doesn't do what I think. Cause then I'm going to get smarter. Yeah. If it always, if I make a change, I always know front stiffer front springs are going to make an understeer less. And I put stiffer front springs in it, understeers less. I'm not any smarter. I'm the same. I, yeah. I knew that. But if it does something the opposite, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, wow. Like we added the pressure. Why did that happen? What went on there? How can that be? Now you can start delving into it and learning and trying to get trying to get smarter. So the good thing about it is Kyle was probably like, frustrated oh there's no absolutes you know i just uh every time is driving scenario it's different speeds grip levels track conditions risk levels blah blah, blah. and it would be frustrating but that's uh, that's the fun part of it so maybe kyle there is an absolute and uh the absolute is something along the lines of uh there's always something different and there's something else to learn and there's like if 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 everything's uh, absolutes, actually, go find another sport. Right. It's no fun. <laughs> because all the fun's gone. So, yeah, yeah. It's no fun. Yeah. 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 No, that was good. That's a good. That was a good question. That's going to have me thinking about more of those. Now. Yeah. I'm going to have to think about. I remember, I'll tell you one quick story where I got caught in that absolute thing. Is And if I've told this on this podcast before. Forgive me, but he's running a guy in an oval at Phoenix. <clears throat> he comes in, he's a relatively new guy in an Indy Lights car, comes in and he says, Oh, it's really, it's it's incredibly loose going into turn three at Phoenix. I'm like, okay, well, I know how to fix that. You know, we got to go softer on the rear springs because softer rear springs always it'll always make grip. You know, we're just loading the tire too hard and it's sliding the back of the car. So I went softer and he went out and he goes, whoa, it's like way worse. I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. It can't be way worse to myself. I'm thinking it can't be way worse, but I'm willing to learn something here. You know, maybe the absolutes aren't right. So I, I said, OK, well, I'll, I'm going like 300 pounds softer, three times what I did the first time. This will definitely plant the rear. And he did like. Two laps came in and goes, are you trying to kill me? Now it's like five times worse. Can't be. So I'm like, okay, we'll show this guy. He doesn't know what he's doing. So I went way stiffer. And he goes, oh, oh that is way better. It's not loose at all. It turns out, relates back to the confidence thing, the rear of the car was moving around too much. And he translated that as loose. So it wasn't loose. It was just no confidence. What I did was giving him more confidence. Now we thought it was better. So I was learning kind of two different things. One, don't get locked into the absolutes, even if you think they're absolute. And it relates right back to the final thing that we just came up with is that confidence is an absolute. That's the one, that's the one thing. Give them the confidence that will faster. So confidence and keep an open mind because there's always a, there's a reason why we say it depends so often on this uh, podcast. Yep. Or we ha or I hedge my bets on, well, 51% of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. That uh, whole thing. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's why it's fun. That's yep. why it's fun. Well, well I hope uh, everybody uh, 
has fun trying to chase all those uh, non absolutes because uh, that's that's what I enjoy. So hopefully everybody can go fast and have fun doing that. And maybe we'll follow up sometime with something you and I talked about one time of we're going to do some myth busting. Yeah. Yeah. We could just pick on all the myths that are out there and we'll go. People should send us myths. Yes. myths or truth racing truths that they've heard and we can try to blow them up yeah yeah or confirm them what's uh how the right. busters what was it? it was confirmed or uh i can't bust it or whatever yes yeah yeah, yeah. or plausible yeah, yeah. Or plausible like yes yeah plausible yeah okay okay i like that i like yep. that yeah we were we actually talked about doing a book about that because there's enough of them to make a book yes yes <laughs> uh and i think that book is now a myth. <laughs> right. It's a myth. Yeah. Right. We're we'll, too busy. <laughs> we'll get around to it someday. Yes. Someday. Yeah. Someday. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Well, well uh, there we go. Another another episode. What was that? That was episode number 19. 19. Wow. 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 Huh. Going by fast. Yeah. Going by yeah. fast. Well, I can't wait for 20. We'll do 20 soon. Send in some myths and other questions because we love getting them. And that's, uh, uh, we, we get a lot of them, but we can always use more. We don't have too many, that's for sure. So uh, keep, keep, keep them coming. Yep. So thanks, everybody. And keep listening and keep sending our stuff and having fun. Sounds good. Have fun, everyone.